Hi everyone, it's Cindy with Mimi's Treasure Cottage and I'm here with another haul from that amazing estate sale that I believe I'm titling something along the lines of the lightning strike <laughs> estate sale because, you know, it's not very often that lightning strikes twice in the same place. And in a very short period of time, I have been to a number of amazing estate sales um, with a lot of vintage Christmas. This one was no exception. I do have more vintage Christmas to show you in this haul, as well as some other items as well. So since there's so much to get into, let's just jump right in. Um, it's funny, I was up in the Christmas room and the game room. Oh, and this is another estate sale where I walked in Saw some really cool stuff, was looking around, and the estate sale um, organizer was there. And I said to her, I go, um, do you have a room where there's vintage Christmas? And she says, oh, yes, I, you know, there is, but most of it's gone. And so I didn't go up there right away. Don't ever listen to them when they say that. Um, if you love vintage Christmas like I do, go there first. <laughs> and then you can look at other stuff because i really don't think they like in their mind they know what was really cool that they thought and you know and so just to say that it's all gone means that the the draws what they thought were the public draw um items are were gone but there was plenty of stuff there so anyway in that vintage christmas room um was also a, a bunch of vintage games and it's really funny because what I'm going to show you next, I did not put into my pile and yet somehow they ended up with my stuff and that's okay because I think I will use them at some point in time in arts and crafts. They threw in this whole pile of playing card bingo cards. At least I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Um, so like I said, I'll probably use these in crafts sometime. Also in that game room and Christmas room, I picked up this lotto game. I like to pick them up um, for arts and crafts if they're in, you know, halfway decent condition. The box is still intact, but it's not in the greatest of shape. These are what the cards look like. These are the awesome little um, tokens for calling. And then there was also this vintage ad, much newer, but they were writing a score on there. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, I thought that was neat. So I picked that up while we're doing the games. I picked up another game. This one had writing on it that the people who I believe were also collectors had um, written on there. Now it says Bull and Bear Edition 1947 marked complete. The box is very cool. I have a number of pit, vintage pit, pit games that I have picked up. The box is very cool. Uh, the card itself is not that exciting. I have seen that a number of times. So mostly it was the box on this one that um, got my attention. And it does have its paperwork in the bottom. Copyright 1919, renewed in 1947. So that goes along with what they said. It was the 1947 edition there so that card or that piece of ephemera was in there and then this that also tells you it contains a bull and a bear card so somewhere in there is a bull and a bear card so that's kind of cool okay so since i told you it was in the christmas room it'd be good to show you some of the christmas stuff i picked up this jigsaw puzzle it's an american greetings puzzle it's in the package and um there's a date on here oh shucks i looked this up one time and i don't remember i think it's 1981 82 1982 so it's vintage not that vintage but it's it's nice i also picked up in that room this bradford box of christmas ornaments they are vintage. There are, is no barcode on here. On the back, it has this angel that you can make, which I thought was kind of neat. But let me show you the ornaments up close. So they're plastic and they have these scenes on them. This is a round one. There's a, uh, four round ones and then a couple of the bell shapes. This bell shape though, 
Notice how the plastic of the design is kind of pushed down and it's that way all the way around. So I don't know if that was in manufacturing or what. Um, but I picked those up. I also picked up this cool mercury glass ornament, mercury glass garland. You can get the bag open. I paid, because it was half price day, I paid $4 for it. And this one probably sells, oh, there's two of them in there. So there's this one. In green colors. And then there's this one. This is the one that I was thinking of. Now it's smaller. Um, it's only a few feet long. But it's very unusual with the indents on this part. So I've done a lot of research lately on mercury glass beads and I have not seen one that's similar to this one. Um, they're roughly going between 22 cents and 35 cents, 30 something cents per foot. In the Christmas room, there was also a bookshelf that had a lot of reference books. That's how I know that they were into collecting. This one is very cool. And I think I'm gonna hang on to this one for myself. So I can get better acquainted. This one, I may pass on. Worcester and Steigl or Stiegel, post-revolutionary -re period, press glass era, vogue for pictorial bottles, Victorian era in glass, cut and engraved glass, the new art glass. So it doesn't really talk about specific um, glass manufacturers. And there are some pictures in here. But I picked those up. I picked this up. This was with all the other pictures and things that I picked up, which I think I showed in the last video. But I liked her. I thought she was very nice. Um, I'm not sure if this is wood or a resin, but it's not a framed piece. It's actually um, either decoupage onto that or, you know, I don't know how they manufactured it. Look at these amazing opera glasses. Aren't they cool? That's like, um, I think Mother of Pearl. It's either Mother of Pearl or Aloni. I'm not real good on my shells, but it is shell. It is missing this part of the rim on this guy. It is also missing the glass here and here. So it's probably mostly for decorate, decorative purposes because I don't think that you can I don't think it's possible to get them into focus. Um, plus, because of the missing, the missing glass in here, um, the bottom of the glass has gotten quite dirty. See that? That's dirt. Um, they would need to be cleaned if you're going to use them, but if you're just going to set them, they're fine. I also picked up this set of ashtrays in a um, little serving dish, but I thought they were really, really cool. They're all made in Japan. This one's dirty. Clean. It was probably the top one for a long time. <laughs> and then the original price sticker is on there, what they wanted for them originally. And uh, like I said, they're in this cool thing. Each one of the individual ashtrays is marked um, Japan. But, you know, like with all the other ones, they don't have to be ashtrays. They're just really cool, right? You could use them as little um, nut dishes or whatever right i think they're cool hang on just a minute and i will show you some other stuff 
All right, so um, I picked up this gorgeous satin glass pitcher, which is in excellent condition. This is the size of, well, let's do it over here. This is the size of it. It's about as big as my head. And it comes with four excellent condition glasses as well. And these are probably juice size glasses. I don't know who makes it. As with most things, I, I don't know any of the history of them, but I think they're gorgeous. And I picked them up. I also picked up two of these, so it's possible that you saw the other one in another live sale. These are um, shoe banks. And I'm assuming that they were made in Japan, although there is no mark on them. And the other one actually has its felt covering the whole thing. So you could actually um, put a stopper there and use it as a bank. It's not one that you would have to smash. It's in very nice condition other than the fact that they pulled the felt off of the bottom of it. We picked up some fun um, button cards. There were a whole bunch of these. And I think they all have the same button, roughly, on them. This one's missing a few. They're a slightly bigger button. And this is also a slightly bigger button. But I liked the button cards, and um, whether they have intrinsic value or not, I have no idea, but they're nice in junk journals and arts and crafts. This is a card of buttons and it says that it's genuine ocean pearl so i thought that was fun i almost never pick up jewelry but i did pick up a box full of jewelry at this sale i don't remember how much i paid i well i think i actually paid 50 cents a piece for them this one is marked but i swear i didn't see a marking on it before I don't know what it says. This pin here. It's very pretty. It had some pieces that went with it, but that were missing the, the pearl. I don't know if it's going to zoom in for you to see the signature. Or if I'll remember to look it up and tell you later. Oh, I can see what that is. This is Trafari. This is nice. Nice pin for 50 cents. I, that was a good find. Um... An old button. I like the fact that it has the fleur de -lis on it. A bracelet. Very nice little bracelet. I like this bar pin. It's rhinestone bar pin. I like these. I like shiny things. These are screw post earrings. This is a nice pen. This one is not signed, but it's rhinestone and I'm like a crow. I like shiny things, sparkly things, which is why I picked this up. And at first I thought that it was just a missing crystal, but it was either on an earring or a pendant. These are some broken pieces of jewelry. I picked these up for art purposes. They're like smashed earrings. <laughs> these are so tiny. I'm not sure you're going to be able to see these or if I'll remember to film a close-up. That's why I apologize. This is a National Honor Society pen. This is a little bowling pen. Probably given to people on a league. I'm looking up at my umbrella. It likes to swing around. I'm filming in the middle of November and it's a gorgeous day. Absolutely gorgeous day. It's not cold. This is another, this is a religious pin. I think that's the sacred heart. Here's another religious um, pendant. I think that's the Pope. So this goes with this pin, but the unfortunate thing is, and I looked all over, there was only one earring, which is kind of a shame, but I picked it up for art. 
We already talked about the shiny things. This is a beautiful rhinestone bracelet. Love it. Here's another gorgeous rhinestone bracelet. This one needs to be shined up a little bit. Again, 50 cents. And creme de la creme, this was also 50 cents. And if I remember, I will insert a picture here. That's right. I got a sterling silver ring for 50 cents. Very cool. I have some more wonderful vintage Christmas to share with you. They had a whole lot of these. I don't know if they go this way or this way. Probably this way. Um, these are the light bulbs. And these unusual light bulbs often go for decent money. This one's mostly intact with its little thing on the bottom. It's pretty cool. This one's missing a thing on the bottom, but it doesn't even look like it was supposed to, like there's a place for it. I don't remember what I paid for that. Got this beautiful ornament here. Very vintage and very unusual. I've never seen one like it before. I paid $4 for it. Look at this deep indent. Very deeply indented and it has the um, mica. It's like snow on the outside and flowers. Very cool. Doesn't say anything on the um, thing. I thought this was very cool. Another beautiful indent with the beautiful birds, I think, on a wire there. Very nice. Paid $2 for that one. Here's another beautiful one. It's a rather large one, indented, double indented. There's the top of it. Paid two dollars for that. And here's a really large one. Very pretty. Very nice. I paid three dollars for this guy. I picked up, these were loose. I picked up a whole bunch of these mercury ornaments. And I picked up three more bags of mercury glass bead garlands. And since I'm filming several videos in a row, I don't know if it was this video or another one, but these types of uh, mercury garlands can probably go for between 25 and 30 cents, maybe more per inch. And I haven't measured that. I don't know how long it is. This one is multicolored. I paid $4 for that one that I just showed you. This one I paid $2.54. Well, I'm having a hard time getting, having a hard time finding the ends and getting this undone, but this is a multicolored um, one and it has the star on the end. And then the last one that I picked up very cool. There are two of them. Last package. I don't know how they would have hung these. Very interesting, but it has a little red bell on it. And that's how it's joined. Different, very different. And then here's a smaller one. It's funny, they almost look like um, bracelets, if I didn't know better. Very exciting um, estate sale. I really hope that you've been enjoying these videos from that lightning strike estate sale because I was just, um, I had so much fun that day. So much fun. It's, again, I think I mentioned before, it's a beautiful day in November. We're not getting very many of those, so everybody's out doing their yard work. And I need to finish. <laughs> So anyway, um, my total spend at that estate sale was $135. I never spend that kind of money at an estate sale, but I could not put anything back. And as a matter of fact, there was more I could have bought. Um, I do hope that you enjoyed that. And I hope that um, if you're not already a subscriber, you'll consider subscribing. And I would love to see everybody in the next video. Bye all.